You gave me, I think you gave me the high sign, Steve. Yeah. Um, shall we get the meeting started? I'd like to start off with the pledge and the call to order. Everybody's here that I can see. Um, pledge of allegiance. You want to? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any additions or corrections to last month's meeting? To the minutes? Hearing none, I'll entertain. Okay. You second? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Minutes are approved as written. Uh, first thing we have is a variance application from Robert Butcher requesting to build a new eight foot deep covered porch and match the width and the house and a stairway from the porch to front property line at 320 Ontario Avenue. You're up to bat there, you want to step up? Uh, we'll have the applicant go first and tell us how you've addressed what we were asking for. Then they could have opportunity to speak and then you could certainly rebut. I think the one thing for the board's attention is at last meeting, we had discussion on this matter and there was uh, some concerns because there wasn't, there was a, um, a, a top view, but not really a, a perspective. Um, we don't really, it looks like we don't have a plan. We have a conceptual um, drawing that is actually different from the floor plan that he had previously um, submitted with regards to a dormer that doesn't appear to be show and four posts. So um, again, this is, I guess, a concept of a drawing. Um, so it's not a plan per se, um, but it does give you an idea as to what Mr. Butcher is doing. So I think with that, we can um, ask Mr. Butcher to, to speak and let us know uh, basically some of the uh, concerns and what he's after and which drawing is going to be correct in terms of the one we're supposed to be looking at. Um, I have some plans, some uh, pictures that we had some problems with um, emailing, so I don't know if they're up yet or not. Uh, can I have my architect here? Is talk? your speaker on, Bob? Uh, she, Press the button. And no, nope, he's good. Light. He's good. Yep, he should be. Um, can I have my architect speak in behalf? So this is yeah. the elevation that you're kind of wanting to go with is what's this supposed here? Yes, my architect Bill will talk about this. Give, give me one second, please. Okay. Give, just give me one second. Was that attached now? No, the email is also approved. Okay. So I can go back down there and see the email. Okay. Does the architect have the drawings? Uh, what I have is the original floor plan that okay. was submitted, and then, um, well, first of all, let me introduce myself. My Hi. name is William Rollins. I live at 910 North 4th Street. I was the founding architect of Aquatica Design. I used to work for Steuben Rock. Uh, I'm now retired. Um, Rob is a next door neighbor. He has a property next to me on 4th Street. And I'm very much aware of the history of this house uh, because it's right around the corner. Um, the drawing that was done, uh, I don't see the date on this, but this, this plan drawing is from like a year and a half ago. It's a conceptual kind of what we were looking at. When uh, Pat, who is a neighbor, two houses west of Rob complained that it was blocking her view, that this would potentially block her view. Rob and I then Excuse went me, out to the property. Blocking her view of what? She has a single window. And what is she getting blocked from looking at? Her view, a slimmer view of the lake. I have photos on my phone, if you'd care for me to pass my phone. Sure. And I can show that to you. The unfortunate thing is that Rob actually, we went inside her house um, and met with her. And what we had done is 
literally staked out where the post would be and strung lines showing roof line and everything else and then went inside the house and talked to her. And she allowed us to take a photograph from the window. Um, I sat down at a chair and looked out the window and there was a view. And even with the posts for the proposed porch in the sketch, which this is the direction we're heading in, uh, she still has that window of view. Um, we, Rob actually took a photograph. When I sat down, I said to Rob, here, sit in the chair. Uh, Pat's response was, I don't sit and look out the window. I drink my coffee in the morning and I stand staring out the window. And standing, I'm taller than her. I have the exact same view. So uh, let me put my mask on and um, I can show each of you what we're talking about. Yeah, if you want, you could just start on one of the ends. I'll look with you done. <laughs> Get two of us. Okay. Did That's you know your old competitor down there, Richard Lindy? What's that? That's your old competitor, Richard Lindy. He's also an architect. Oh, I really? Know. Okay. I, I did aquatics next. I specialized. If he, if he, if he nice. approves of it, I think it's probably real good. That's the window. That's the only window. This is from the neighbor's porch right at the rail. This is what she has to look through for the neighbor's porch. And then the wooden stakes that you see back there are where the three posts are. Gotcha. That we're about. Kevin, if she doesn't like it, you can sell her house for her and then yeah, sell her another one closer to me. And what Rob is proposing is to match basically the porch roof that's in most of that neighborhood, which is a, a four to one pitch roof, which is the minimum you need to get uh, to keep your warranty on shingles. And in fact, this drawing was taken from the sidewalk looking directly at the house based on a photograph I took and using the wire frame that we had designed in the post where we had placed them in that photograph that you all saw. And she's going to be able to see completely through and still have her little glimpse of blue. Now, just to note, this house originally had here a roofed, A-framed roofed, facing the street entryway uh, that had a bench on it so that people could 
go outside the door and sit and look at the lake. And that would have been blocking her view. Rob tore that down when he bought the house. And for 12 years, she's enjoyed an uninterrupted view of not only that little sliver of blue, but all of the flagpoles and the emergency signal that's there and the signage that always says rip current. Um, that's what she's worried about not being able to see. Is that the one shown on the screen up top that you're speaking of? Uh, the original? Yeah, that's it with the original. Okay. So in, on the left side of that is a small bench on that, yep, right in that area would be a small bench. And that more likely blocked her view than what we're proposing. So with that, I'll rest. Thank you. Do you have any questions, Steve? Go ahead. No, I think uh, if you want, we could hear from the neighbors and then if we want to hear from there. You were got an objection to either one of you guys? You got any questions at this point? If you want to step up to the mic and voice your opinion. Uh, again, my name is Bill Burton and I live on have Fort. Have you logged in, Joel? I'm sorry? Have you logged in? Yes. Okay, good. I have. I'm Bill Burton and I live around the corner on 4th Street. Uh, and I did speak at the last hearing and uh, I stand by those concerns. Um, if I may say so, I think it is extremely distasteful for somebody to minimize somebody's lake view and refer to it as a sliver and can only see this much. Uh, lake view is very important, however much it is or isn't. And she's lived in that house for 45 years, so I don't think she's going to move. And I do think that she's entitled to her lake view. And if the value of her property declines, mine declines right along with it, as I said last time. Furthermore, my understanding is that a zoning variance is to be granted uh, with due deference to the board. It, my understanding is that a zoning variance is to be granted in the case of a hardship. And the only hardship I've heard is a person who wants to build something this big which I'm not sure qualifies as a hardship. Um, so I would like to hear that issue addressed as well. Thank you. Next gentleman. My name is Nathan Eastway. I live at 312 Ontario Ave. If you look at Rob's house, I am the immediate neighbor towards the lake. Um, I, my concern with Bill is that um, mine's not so much of a property value or a view, but if property values do decline, mine will in um, accord with that, I guess. Architect Bill, how big are the columns going to be? They're six inches by six inches. They'll be an eight inch steel wall column on each side. Okay. And will actually serve as a structural weight. And and the mock-up that was done, how big were those posts that were installed? Um, they were two by two, and then we attached uh, another two inches on each side of that. Just attached. at the railing height, correct? Uh, right. So okay. Right. right, so the difference was a two by two versus a six by six, again, to Bill's point about the view uh, that someone does currently have of the lake. Um, my biggest and only concern, my biggest and only concern is the precedence that this would set for a variance approval for people on our block that we immediately care about, but also in the Ellis Historic neighborhood, in that encroaching so far on the public right of way um, at Rob's house, unfortunately, would therefore allow me, who is between Rob's house and the lake, I should be able to do the same and put, add onto my porch, which is currently 14 feet away from the right of way. The house to the left of Rob's is 13 feet away from the right of way. They're looking at seven feet. If a variance is approved, um, 
I should be able to do the same and do a porch addition. And then therefore the residence is at 308 Ontario at the corner of Ontario and Broughton would therefore be allowed to do the same. My concern is only the precedence that would set. Thank you. What's the setback from the sidewalk? Tw uh, 25 feet. 25 feet from the sidewalk? Correct, from the property line. The property line is just inside the sidewalk, isn't it? Yes. When I, I was in real None of the houses what? meet that 25 foot setback in that area. The 25 foot setback? That's okay. correct. So it's not gonna... Right. When he's talking about public view, that really isn't the public property from the 25 feet in. That's his property, correct? Anything that's outside the public right away is private property. Okay, so 25 feet from the inside of the sidewalk to his house is 25 feet. That's all it's the, uh, tw None of these houses meet the 25 foot setback from the property line. Those are not 25 foot setbacks on that old. No, uh, that whole entire block. In, fa in fact, the house that is between uh, Pat, who lodged the complaint about the impediment to her view, the, porch, the porch that Rob is proposing is even with the same edge of that blue house. I don't know if it's possible to put the overhead back up. I, I think if we just look at the, no, of the, an aerial view. Okay, uh, go back. Well, that's good. The floor of that porch is eight feet from the house to the, uh, towards the street, right? That photo right there? An investor bought that, it's turning it into an Airbnb. Um, yeah, unfortunately, none of the houses on this section of street comply. However, every one of these houses, including the gentlemen's, have some sort of entryway or porch attached to them on that side of the street. Pat's house faces 4th Street. That is her front porch on 4th Street. Her complaint is this window. Her view is not impeded. I'm sorry, sir, but we've been inside. We've taken photographs. We've showed them to the council. The view is maintained. Uh, this, in terms of value, will add value to the house and thus to the property, thus to the neighbors in the surrounding area. Rob has a double wide parcel. It goes all the way back to the alley. Basically, I don't know if you know the Zur Heidi property, but it goes back basically to where Zur Heidi had put a pad to park his RV down in the alley and the carriage house. Rob has the potential to put a garage on that property, just as the neighbor to his left did, which was a realtor here in town who recently sold it for 300000 he had a two-bay garage. He built it into the side. There's a small hill there. He built it into the side of the hill and also had a studio apartment. He rented the house and the studio apartment. That's all now going to be a B&B. &B. Rob has no proposal for a garage. It has nothing in any way to block this gentleman's view and can only add value to the neighborhood. This is not a cheap porch. I'm redoing the porch on my house, uh, doing it myself. And just the material alone is over $6,000. And it's not nearly as big as this in terms of overall length. So again, the issue was impediment of view. There is no impediment of view. The question becomes like, uh, Rob's neighbor to the east has discussed, 
precedent. Now, his house does stick out beyond Rob's with his current porch. There's sort of an enclosed entryway. Maybe some sort of medium accommodation could be reached, but if you move Rob's porch in, it now impedes the view of the woman who's complaining two houses to the west as I showed you in the photographs where the wooden posts were. Those posts would now be within that window of blue. So, gentlemen, it's in your hands. Thank you. There's a neighbor would like to respond. Because, because this is an important issue for the president said it said, I looked up on the county GIS system yesterday and was able to find surveys of my property at 312, Rob's at 320, and the neighbor to the west at 328. And the setback distances from the edge of the right of way, um, which is, I believe, three feet um, past the outside extent of the curb. Um, my house is, um, the front of the porch is 14 feet back, and my porch is a small inset porch. The front of my house is 16 feet. 17 feet back. Um, 320 Ontario, the front of the house is 15 feet back from the edge of the right of way. The proposed porch would be seven feet from the edge of the right of way. The house at 328 Ontario, the front of the house is 21 feet back. And their porch, I measured it as eight feet, putting it 13 feet back from the right of way. So the front of their porch sticks closer to the right of way, one foot further than mine. And let me do the math seven feet back from the edge of the right of way is the proposed porch at 320. Again, it's precedence. I don't think that Rob or Pat or Bill would want me to put a porch on that close, nor would I want someone, my neighbor to the lake side where our view is and the money comes from for our property value to be able to put a porch that close either. I think it's gonna look great if it gets approved. I think it's a great profile. I'm concerned about the precedence that it sets. Thank you. I can make one comment real quick. It's real important for the board to know that as far as precedent, it keeps being mentioned, but each individual property, uh, regardless, has the opportunity to come here. So as far as precedent, is there some uh, 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 comments in terms of what you're saying that are true? Yes, there are. At the same time, each individual application, any of these people can come in at any time to make the same request and we'd be hearing it. So it doesn't automatically suggest because one got it that others should get it. I'm not saying it is or is not. The precedent is something to be uh, concerned about and think about, but each one of these is its own individual um, uh, case before the board. There's a gentleman wants to uh, neighbor wants to speak again. Uh, Up to the mic, please, sir. Uh, yeah, we just we just got people online and stuff, so we just need you. Understood. Um, How you doing? Uh, I, I'm I'm asking the board: Is there or is there not a requirement to show a hardship in order to um, request a variance? Yes. I might mention one thing here. You've got three realtors sitting up here in front of you. Uh, and I ironically don't think your value of your property is right. going to go up or down if he puts this porch on that house. Because you're not buying a lake property here to look at the lake. That's not, Ontario mm -hmm. Avenue isn't set up for that. What is it, what is it, each one has a different setback here? Is that what I'm understanding? Every house and every neighborhood has a different setback. Um, what we but have- there was no uniform setback when these were built? These are built in like 1900, yeah, 1890s. Okay, thank you. Um, so, so that's kind of the challenge that we're dealing with. Is like the the gentleman to the east. I'm sorry, sir, I forgot your name. Um, Nathan. Uh, Nathan. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Um, you know, when you take a look at the other side of the road, you got people that have the front porches basically on top of the road and on top, you know, right on the right of way. That's across the street. You know, over here, you mentioned it's 14. I think I think Rob's property, 
um, it looks like it's a, a, the, the property line is approximately three feet behind the sidewalk. So we're a little bit behind the sidewalk. He's seven feet with the stairs and then eight feet um, from his house. So he would, the, the, the porch itself would be eight feet from the property line. You know, he obviously has to build the stairs because there's the, you know, if you take a look at all the homes there uh, from a grading perspective, uh, um, it's just the stairs have to be built as part of this. So, so yeah, it's, you know, hardship's one of the things you have to take into account. The view's one of the things you have to take into account. I don't know, uh, we haven't heard from Mr. Butcher. The, uh, the house has been sitting for some time. I know there were some things with uh, 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 court and different things like that. Is Mr. Butcher gonna live there? When is this project gonna get done? You know, those are all things we'd be interested in hearing as well, you know, just a little bit from yourself. Well, like you mentioned, um, we had some legal issues with the basement. That's all finished. And now. I don't think anyone's familiar with that. I don't know if you want to just mention, you know, what took place there. He just did it. It was poor quality craftsmanship on that. So I had to take him to court for that. And I but I mean, you you lifted the house yep. and put in a new basement. And so there was a lot of work. Yes. What, there was a nope. Cream City. There was They're a not familiar. Okay. There was a Cream City brick uh, basement underneath there. Uh, one wall fell down, yeah, and I thought, okay, let's do the whole basement. Right. So we um, lifted up the house, um, put a new, brand new basement underneath it, um, then ran into some, some legal issues, got some money back, and now I can I have enough time and money now to start and, and get it done. So well, what is your uh, estimated time for uh, getting completed here? Pardon? At this point, what are you estimating completion time? Want to get the? I want to get. Well, currently, I don't have a job right now, so that's going to be my main, my main uh, job is doing that. Um, get the porch done this year. How Winter, long ago did you buy that house, Bob? Pardon? How long ago did you buy that house? A long time ago. Um, I'll say, about twelve years ago, fifteen years ago, and I have been paying the regular taxes on this that I haven't gone to the city or anything and said, hey, because it's gutted out, there's no value to that. I've stayed with the three thousand dollars a year for the um for tax assessments for that land. That house is currently being built. Being a realtor, I would think that the big thing on your mind was that you had a room to put a garage back there. Um the other properties don't have enough room in the backyard for a garage, you've got a problem. <laughs> right. At this time, I'm... That, Kevin? That's more important to a lot of people than uh, you looking out a window at it for the <laughs> lake that's a block and a half away, because you've got to look way across the land park all the way to see the lake. Yeah, I want to get this porch, and uh, I want to start... I want to get it done. So it's, time is... Um, I've been sitting on it for too long. I have time now. I have the money, and it's time to get it done. What do you think, Keely? Are you agreeing with uh, Kevin and I that this, the garage, having the ability to put a garage up is far more important than the view out of it because this isn't really lake property here. I guess my question is the, the neighbors that have an issue with it, I guess what type of porch do you want him to put there? Because he's really matching the neighborhood based on the homes right, I mean, right next door um, also across the street and, and I guess upgrading the style of that, that property. Um, I mean, he's not looking at a two tiered deck, like no. the, there is right next door. No. Um, I'm just, I guess I'm kind of surprised that by improving this property, all of the neighbors, their properties will be improved because this is probably the, really, it is the only eyesore that's there. So, right. so allowing him to to do that and finish. I'm, no offense to you. I'm sorry. No, no, but, I agree. I agree. I've had with the city but about painting and stuff like that. I want to get it done. That's, yeah. So right. I mean, currently at the situation right now, you're hurting the people around you right. because of the condition of that property. After I finish this house, this house should be probably valued at three fifty to four hundred thousand. After I finish, and and that helps improve the property values of the people around you. I mean, you can tell they they take a lot of pride and ownership in their homes on on you know definitely on each side of you and 
and across the street as well. Yes. Um, you know, it's a nice little neighborhood right there, and 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 the property owners want that to stay. So I understand that as well. But you, I mean, being able to have a view out of a, a small window on the third story of your house doesn't constitute you as lake property. Um, you have to have some sort of lake access or, or be able to touch the water in some sort of way. So um, to me, I, I don't really fully understand why they wouldn't want you to, to do that improvement right. um, because it helps helps them. I agree. Um, as well as the, the homes around it. So I'm a little confused on that. Thank you, Kelly. Sure. Pip, step up to the stand, and, and I'd love to hear By your point We all point work for view. different companies, so we're not on the same page either. <laughs> When a, when a person buys a home, as we did, um, it, it has certain amenities. And a view of the lake is definitely an amenity whether or not it's on the lake. It's perhaps even more important if it's not on the lake, nothing's going to block your view of the lake if you're on the lake. Mm -hmm. If you're a couple of houses away from the lake, then an, you know another structure can block your view. And that's why when you buy your property a few blocks away from the lake, excuse me, a few houses away from the lake, you expect the zoning to protect, you know, to set parameters and to limit what somebody can put up in your way to, to impact the neighborhood. So again, it's a matter of being faithful to the zoning. And if there's a hardship here, we have yet to hear it. If you go back to the original photo uh, that had the that, that's what was there. If that gets built back, that blocks Pat's view. Those columns are now moved back in closer to the house and they are in direct line of that blue window that was created by this proposed porch. I own a house on 4th Street. I bought it and moved in in April of 2000. Has a huge bay window in the front. I could actually see from my house the lake. And it was a, yes, it was a selling point. It was kind of nice to have. The neighbor across the street built a garage. Had every right to do it. I didn't oppose it. Didn't come into council and complain. Now I have a sliver of blue that I can see. And he, has, and he has a garage. If you've got a ladder, you can get on the roof and look at the lake. Well, that's what I was going to come for a variance and ask if I can go up another two stories on the house. I'm coming back next week. But uh, these things happen. And this porch would certainly be a vast improvement to not only this house, but to the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else got any discussion on this? Any other Ed, you want to press it? Ed? Hang on a second, Ed. Ed. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in the real estate business. I <laughs> want to be anyway. But uh, as far as uh, the aesthetic value, I think what's, what is being proposed would add to the value of all the homes in the area. And uh, to me, it would be a definite advantage to continue with the rehab of what apparently was a home that was in very poor shape. That's all I've got to say. Anything else to say, Ed? Kevin, do you? Donnie? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to either approve this or disapprove this. I just would like to know the city's, the city's standpoint on this after going through this uh, after quite a while. Yeah, I, I guess from our perspective, you know, Mr. Butcher certainly has the opportunity to come here. You're right, the zoning, does, you know, has certain ramifications. Like I said, the zoning right now says 25 feet, and none of the house meet that 25 feet. So that's, but you're right, this is the board that has the ability to hear these concerns. At the last meeting, Mr. Butcher did not have a drawing really kind of reflecting, you know, uh, what he was, I mean, he had a top view, but not really a, a, a design. And that was what was after to further to, to, to 
the discussion. So, so from uh, a, a staff perspective, this is uh, not, it, it's not a clear cut one. Um, uh, it, it certainly has merits to it from a design perspective. Um, and if the board was to approve it, I think whoever would approve it should approve it with a survey that confirms that uh, what is being shown here with the seven foot and the eight foot uh, is submitted and as well as uh, final drawings so that those drawings that would get submitted for building inspection review would be uh, uh, similar to what you have before you in this conceptual drawing. And if they were not, that it would be brought back to the board to reconsider. You're talking about the, this, this elevation here is what you're expecting to see as a finished product? Mm -hmm. That's what he's proposing. That, okay. You want a motion? Yes. I would move to approve they said what Steve just said. Well, first of all, we have a motion. Are you making the motion? I'm to making the motion. Anybody seconding it? No. Donald? What about materials? Can you, can you, by chance, hit yours, Don? It's going to be. Yep, go ahead. Hit that. Uh, material is going to be a vinyl. Uh, Tarek or teak or um, the plastic vinyl is not going to be. Composite. The, yeah, composite, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be the, the um, treated, pressure treater or anything. It's going to be composite. And I did, like I said, I had pictures and the, we've had some problems with the emails that. Um, showed up of what it was going to look like, but with the ma emails not coming through. But yeah, it's going to be a composite, a, ni a nice dark um, wood color. Um, and and the the front of the house is staying the same, What's and, and the rails, and the, and there was mention of the posts. Uh, you know, are those six by six or are those two by six? I mean, what, it, I, I'm assuming the yes. final plan design that actually, that actually gets constructed, that gets submitted, is going to reflect this conceptual drawing. Yeah. Um, we didn't have a lot of time to, to kind of act on this, and we thought it was important to sort of wireframe it out and to try to get photographs to give you at least an indication that Pat's view, which was, what I understood to be the primary complaint wasn't being impeded. Uh, yes, I have a set of drawings that I've done for Rob on the interior renovation of the house. Uh, I had done that preliminary drawing for Rob of a potential uh, porch. Um, that has now gone by the wayside. This would become what we're talking about uh, as you mentioned, composite material, there's two different companies that make decking. One's called uh, Fibron, F-I-B-E-R-O-N, and they have a wide variety of colors in, available. It's very stable material. It's what I'm using on my own house. Uh, and there's Trex, which is more expensive and has been on the market longer, but has less of a color selection. Uh, in terms of the encasement material, uh, if you can imagine that there's a three inch round lolly column, kind of like what you probably might have in your basement, uh, which is not uncommon. That's what would be encased in these three six by six. So they're basically getting trimmed out with vinyl. It's a, it's a polyvinyl material and it's paintable. The railing that's shown is actually a cable rail held in tension, uh, spaced four inches apart, which is the maximum per code. Uh, the center column uh, for the rail uh, would be steel, and it's only uh, two by two, and it's just for attachment of the cables. And then there'll be a top handrail, and that could either be painted white or stained to match the deck. Um, there's nothing here that's out of the ordinary in terms of building materials. Uh, and in fact, my own porch, when I went to the building department to talk to them, uh, the first thing they said is, it has to be six by six pressure treated wood. And I said, I'm using steel lolly columns. And they said, oh, you're doing it right. And then the building inspector went on to tell me how he had pointed out to his neighbor, who's porch supports were rotted, 
that he needed to replace them, and his neighbor simply encased them in trim. My own porch is a gigantic A-frame on the front of my house. The only thing holding that span and keeping the A from coming pushing down on the front was the trim. The only thing supporting the, the roof, the structure, was the conical shaped trim that came down onto two inches of concrete and then uh, just a perimeter edge of brick that was hollow on the inside. I'm stru structurally upgrading mine to make it correct with the IBC. Rob is gonna be doing the same. What um, is the material below the deck um, that faces the street? We haven't decided yet uh, what we're gonna do to kind of enclose that area. Um, what I'm doing on my own house is that perimeter edge, and I'm sorry that it's kind of askew, but uh, what I've done, what I had done previously, what I'm going to do again, is I did a perimeter trim edge uh, out of the PVC, and then I infilled with uh, the beadboard. So actually used beadboard so it had re retained sort of the historical value of the Craftsman style house. And then are you using the, it looks like you have brick at the corner? Uh, stone, stone. Possi or possibly brick. Things okay. have not quite yet been decided. And the stairs, those are something other than treated wood? The treads will match the deck. They'll be made out of composite material. They will be pressure treated wood underneath. And then the edges will be clad and the fascia will be clad with that PVC composite material. And then the roof, both uh, the top material as well as the portion um, that you would see if you're looking up from the deck? The fascia around the soffit is again the PVC composite material. And what's interesting is at that angle, standing directly in front of the house, you don't actually see the four one pitch of the roof that goes back, but it would be a standard asphalt shingle to match the roof of the house. And anything as far as, like I said, that just the portion when you're... Oh, the, the underside of the deck? Yeah. Yeah, the ceiling? Uh, yes, yeah, ceiling. I think, I, think we'd, I, think we'd be, <laughs> I think we'd be looking at trying to do beadboard okay. again and carry that historical look. So your footprint on the lot is what you show here. About 18 feet from the inside of the sidewalk, the lot line to the house. And then you've got an eight foot deck that you're gonna be working on, a seven foot between there, and uh, you got three feet from is that the inside of the sidewalk? Yeah. So there's, if you start at the edge of the sidewalk. Well, 10 feet from the inside of the sidewalk that you'll be starting these posts for the foundation. Am I allowed to believe that? Uh, we're yes. seven feet in. Yeah, he's well, just saying total. from the sidewalk, he was it's saying the feet. additional three. Ten feet total, three and seven. That right. no modern math is ten feet. Huh? <laughs> right. No, he was I'm talking from the property line, which is typically what we talk from. Yeah, I'm talking from the property line. Sorry. Nope. I'm an good. architect. We talk from property lines. We don't We don't talk from sidewalks. Did you so have yeah, footings and frost walls below there? Excuse me? A footing structure below grade? Yeah, we so have to go down a minimum of four feet. We have a motion on the floor to approve this, and that's been seconded. Are there any more discussion? Has it has it been seconded? It has not been seconded. No. Oh, I thought Kevin seconded. Oh, okay. <laughs> it just got a second. There we go. Is there any more discussion? I'll call the question. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Robert, you got yourself a deal. Thank you very much. I think I think the important thing is is that uh, you have uh, six months to get a permit to start construction. Okay, okay let's move to the next. All right, let's keep going. Any more for the meeting? Or are we all done? With what a survey or, and uh, yep, yep. yep. That's something for the drawings. Right. Yeah, we'll get that detail. Yep. Yeah, thanks. We'll Motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None, so it's carried. Thank you, everybody.